Hello, I am Jonas from VHTLWiz.com. In this micro learning video, I'm going to let you in on one of my favorite programming tools, which I use almost every time I code VHDL. And it's got nothing to do with FPGAs. It's IPython. This is the web page for IPython. If you want to install it, you can go to ipython.org. And IPython is a more user-friendly, interactive shell for programming Python and you can use it even if you don't know how to program Python. You can use it like a calculator or for prototyping VSGL rapidly like I do. So I'm going to show you how to use it. And if you don't want to install it, you can also go to this webpage, pythonanywhere.com slash try IPython. You can try it directly in your browser. And I'm going to link to these two web pages in the video description. So just go to the video description and click the links to get to this pages. And what you get in IPython is just the command shell where you can program Python or do anything. So I'm typing something and that wasn't valid Python. So we get an error. But I can, for example, use it like a calculator. This one times two to the power of nine, whatever. And it gives me the result. And I can use it for more programming related stuff. For example, I can multiply hex numbers times zero x times 0x, for example, 3c, whatever. And it gives me the number in the binary, or I can ask for, or in decimal, or I can ask for it in binary, for example. I can do almost anything in this calculator. For example, if I want to know um, what is the largest number that the, a 32-bit int can hold, that's 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. So this is the number, or I can find out, for example, I want to know uh, how many bits do I need to store a specific number. Then I can, for example, import the math package and do math.log2, so the two logarithm of uh, some number. So how many bits, for example, if I want to create an unsigned in VHDL, how many bits do I need to store this value? It's uh, 16 or 17 actually, because you have to store up to the largest number, so it should be like this. Math dot ceiling, ceiling, and then this two logarithm, so 17 bits. So you can use it for almost anything related to math, and this, there's a big math library. You can go to python.org and read everything about it. it it's almost like MATLAB, just uh, free and with better programming capabilities. And that brings me to the other thing that I use Python for a lot, or IPython in particular. That's for prototyping, the rapid prototyping uh, algorithms before I create them in VHDL. So this is the VHDL module that I created a few videos ago uh, for calculating the Fibonacci sequence. And I actually prototyped this one in IPython before I created it because well, you can create anything in VHDL, but it's kind of cumbersome to set it up in the simulator and uh, run it if you just want to test the concept. It's much better to just try it out in IPython or some other high-level programming language first and then move it to VHDL when you have a basic idea of what you want to create. Uh, so if I wanted to, to um, prototype this one again, I would do something like this. Just declare some variables. So I'm declaring the number and the previous number like this, and I'm going to use a for loop, Python for loop. So go 10 iterations in this for loop, and then print, for example, print the number because that's how we can see the number. And I want to store in temporary variable the number. And I'm going to update the number before the next iteration, so the number plus the number, um, the previous number. So that's how the Fibonacci sequence works. The next iteration is the current number plus the one before that. And then we have to fetch this temp variable which I stored and assign it to the previous one before the next iteration. So don't worry if you don't understood all that I did now because uh, it's just Python and uh, it's just a random algorithm that I want to demonstrate now. So if I press enter now, we can see it prints out one, two, three, 
5.8, which is the Fibonacci sequence. And once I got this in Python, just uh, took me a couple of minutes to create it. I just ported it to VSGL because then I had already tested the concept of the algorithm in the Python shell. And if I run it in, uh, in Monosim, of course, we get the same Fibonacci sequence. So that's what uh, you can use Python for. If you, if you feel like uh, you need an advanced calculator with programming capabilities, then you should go and install IPython. And I fairly often just open the IPython shell on my computer. It runs most of the, the time when I'm working because I always need a calculator or do some simple programming. Uh, even when I'm programming VHDL. So that's my power tip today. IPython, you can try it if you want. Leave a comment if you know about Python or any thoughts that you might have. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay safe.